Okay, now I have my first example on entropy. It's a, a pretty uh, common example. It just says an ice cube, 100 grams at zero, melts and reaches room temperature. So you place it on the table or somewhere in the room, and the ice will naturally melt. So it says, what is the change in entropy of the ice, the environment, and the universe, right? What's the change in entropy of the ice, the environment, and the universe? So let's see what's happening as a result of the melting of the ice. So the change in uh, entropy of the ice, well, in the melting process, just due to the melting, right, what is it going to be? The amount of heat that went into uh, ice to melt divided by the temperature of the ice, right? So then how much heat went into melting the ice? Uh, it's going to be the mass of the ice times the heat of fusion of ice over the temperature of the ice. The mass of the ice, we can change that to kilogram, 0.1 kilogram. The, the temperature of the ice, since it's at zero degrees Celsius, we have to convert that to Kelvin, 273.15. Okay, that would be Kelvin. Right, so then the kilogram, kilogram is going to cancel, and then the answer is going to be joule per Kelvin. Okay, now after the ice melting, it's going to turn into it's going to turn into water, and then its temperature is going to rise and reach the room temperature. Right, so delta S ice, uh, which became water, right, uh, turning into turning into water at 25 Celsius. So what would that be? Well, then the, it's going to be the mass of the ice times the specific heat of ice times the change in temperature, right? Mass of ice times specific heat of, uh, of water, right? Because the ice turned into water times dt, the change in temperature, divided by the temperature. Well, this becomes now an integral uh, step, right? Because the change in temp temperature, then incremental change in temperature divided by temperature, but the temperature of the, uh, of the uh, water is increasing, right? So then you, you have to do here M ice, specific heat of water, ln of dt over t from what? Uh, then I can do here from 273.15 Kelvin all the way to the final temperature, which is going to be 25 Celsius, convert that to a Kelvin that's going to be 298.15. 298.15 Kelvin, right? So then I'm going to add that. Can I keep this in Celsius or do I have to change the Kelvin? This one, I do have to change the Kelvin because the ratio of two temperatures in Kelvin is different than the ratio of two temperatures in Celsius. So you do have to change the Kelvin. So the mass of the ice is 0.1 kilogram. The specific heat of water, 4,184 joules per kilogram. Ln of 298.15 over 273.15. Let me see. Okay, now this one I did make a mistake. In this one, the units I gave were joules per gram was 333 joules per gram. But in kilogram, you're doing uh, numbers like that, make sure this kilogram cancels that kilogram, and then it comes out to be um, uh, joules. So I could have either kept the mass of the ice as 100 grams, then I could have done 333 joules per gram, or if you're going to use joules per kilogram, and then kilogram, you got to make sure that you do that correctly, right? So then what will the answer there be? Places Three places over, 121.9 joules per Kelvin, 36.64 joules per Kelvin, right? So notice that it's taking the entropy increase from when going from solid ice to uh, water at zero is 121. It's uh, quite a bit, lot more than heating up that water. So why is the entropy increasing anyway? Well, when heat is coming in, you're changing the phase from solid to liquid, that means in the solid form, the, uh, the water molecules are more tightly bound to each other, so there's, more, there's less uncertainty about what they're doing and where they're at. When they turn into water, they can be kind of anywhere, right, free-flowing, and so there's more uncertainty about what they're doing and when they're at. So the increase in entropy from going from solid ice to uh, liquid water at zero is quite a bit. Now when you warm it, 
Now, all it's doing, you're agitating the water molecules, so kind of their location is more uncertain, but the uncertainty doesn't increase by as much when you warm it. So the change in entropy when warming is not as much as the change in entropy by changing phase from solid to liquid. Now, what if we warmed it all the way up to 100 Celsius? What would the change in entropy be? Would it still be less than the change in entropy in melting the ice? Let's see. What would happen if I warmed it all the way to boiling? 373.15, right? Let, I just want to see for interest sake what that would give you. Okay, then the cha change in entropy is larger than the change in entropy in melting the ice. So maybe the change in entropy in warming water reaches the change in entropy uh, for, to, melt water, to melt ice somewhere in the 90 Celsius, maybe 85, 90 Celsius. It reaches, this becomes 121 and that becomes 121. So that could be a good test question. Find the change in, find the temperature that is required so that the change in entropy of water from zero to that temperature is the same as the change in entropy to melt the, uh, the cube of uh, ice, right? So now this is more. Okay, so then let's go back to the original. Let's add those change in entropies. Delta S total for the ice. Delta S total for ice is going to be 1. 21, okay, but now where did that heat come from? That heat that it took to melt the ice and then get up all the way to the, the environment's temperature, it came from the environment. So the environment lost some heat, but its temperature didn't change. The temperature of the environment stayed at 25, right? So what's the change in entropy of the environment? Because the environment lost some heat, it actually lost entropy. So there's a, it's, there's a little bit more disorder in the environment's molecules, why? It lost some heat to melting the ice. So that means there's a little bit less missing information on what the particles are doing because they gave their heat to the ice, right? So that's gonna be delta Q divided by the temperature of the environment. So what's the delta Q, how much heat? Well, what we're going to have to add is all the heat that it took to melt the ice and all the heat that it took to raise the temperature of the water to 25 Celsius. But then when we divide it, we divide it by the temperature of the environment, not the changing temperature of the ice, right? So the temperature of the environment will stay 298.15 Kelvin, right? So this is something interesting that is happening. The delta Q for the ice is equal to what? MLF, the mass of ice times LF plus M water, C water, delta T. But when we calculate, calculated that for the ice, we had to do this. M ice LF over 273.15. Then we had to do an integral, mass of, water, uh, mass of ice, specific. So first of all, when the ice was melting, we did M ice LF, and then the temperature of the ice when it melted was 273. Then the amount of heat was M ice CW dT over T because the temperature of the ice was incrementally increasing as more heat came. Here for the environment, the temperature on the bottom stays 298. So then I add up how much heat it took to melt the ice. So all I do is get the numerator portion of this, right? So that this is going to be negative. Why? Because the heat was coming out of the environment, right? So minus the mass of the ice, which was what? Um, a 0.1 kilogram. This is 3.33 times 10 to the fifth joule per kilogram. Okay, the kilogram, kilogram cancel plus ma mass of water 0.1, 4,184 joule per kilogram. Change in temperature, 25 Celsius. Here, no integration involved. And then just put a minus. So add up both of this and then put a minus. This tells you the total heat that it took to raise the temperature of the ice to melt it and then to raise its temperature all the way to 25 Celsius, right? And then you divide this by 298.15.
Okay? Notice the environment's entropy went down quite a bit. Oh, quite a bit. The, there's less missing information now. But look, the entropy of the ice went up by 158. So the change in entropy of the universe is what? Positive. That's why the ice will not by itself go from 25, cool down and turn into ice because it would require a change in entropy to be negative for the universe. You see? And see, so the change in entropy of the universe is now positive 158.55 minus 146.77. <coughs> okay? So now you can see a very simple example such as a melting ice. And you can now make a lot more examples like this. It's a very simple example like this. You can show that the change in entropy of the universe for a natural process such as melting ice is going to be positive, which is to show why it cannot happen by itself. Okay? Thank you very much.